Good morning, and thank you for joining us on this SEG After live stream on YouTube. To stay informed about all of our live stream and video events, we invite you to subscribe to this channel. You can go ahead and do that right now. It's conveniently right there on your screen. Today, we present the President's Task Force on Education, Outreach, and Engagement live stream, creating entertainment content on a micro budget. We'll be pausing throughout as we have with us interpreters Nicole Pancino and Mara Bassani Santa Maria. Mara and Nicole will be translating today's program into American Sign Language. They'll be switching off periodically throughout the program. The presentation will begin momentarily. If you have questions that you'd like to have addressed and direct to today's guests, please email pteoe at sagaftra.org. That's pteoe at sagaftra.org. I also want to give you a couple of other web addresses. If you'd like to get more information on the micro budget agreement, please visit sagaftra.org forward slash micro, sagaftra.org forward slash micro. Or if you'd like to get more information on the SPA agreement, please visit sagaftra.org forward slash short project. That's sagaftra.org forward slash short project for information on the short project agreement. As a reminder, today's program is being recorded and you can watch the replay right here on SAG AFTRA's YouTube channel, along with lots more great content. Now, please give a warm welcome to today's host, SAG AFTRA President, Gabrielle Carteris. Thank you, Pam. Thank you so much. Hello, everybody. Welcome. I hope that you are all staying healthy and safe. We are moving through this pandemic, but uh, just thinking about you. We, we have put together a very special discussion for today. Its topic, as Pam said, is creating entertainment content on a micro budget. In this session, we're gonna explore how to create entertainment content on a limited budget using the hottest new SAG after contract, which is called the Micro Budget Project Agreement, or we'll call it micro. This overview is gonna show you how easy and efficient it is for creators of entertainment content to utilize this new agreement with easy application processes for certain fast moving, low budget projects. We'll also cover the basics of the short project agreement. As Pam said, we call that SPA and the low budget new media agreement for when micro isn't quite right, the right fit for your project. We have something actually for everybody. That's what we do, right? So before I go on, I just want to take a moment to say a quick hello to our SAG AFTRA Executive Vice President, Rebecca Damon. Hi, Rebecca. How are you? Hey there, Gabrielle. Excited for this today. I know members are really uh, wanting to see this one. I know they've really been wanting it. So thanks for being with us. For those of you who are new to learning about this, there's been lots and lots, as Rebecca said, buzz about our new micro budget and spa agreements. The micro is actually designed to provide a streamlined signatory process for independent producers of live action projects buzz budgeted at $20,000 or less per picture or episode. And under the new contract, projects can be exhibited on free to consumer, social media platforms, film festivals, public access, TV for Academy Award consideration, demo pur purposes in the classroom. Yes, it could be used everywhere. One important point to note is that the new contract allows for negotiable terms. That's making it, we did this to make it more efficient, a more efficient option for projects that need a fast turnaround. Members are looking for that fast turnaround. So this is another initiative designed to help us be nimble and responsive to the needs of our members who are looking to create. So I just want to take a moment before I formally introduce today's moderator, Stacey Travis. I want to say about her what she would never say about herself. Stacy is an incredible member and advocate for members. She helped to create this micro budget agreement along with other members who are just as committed to the membership and she and they work to make sure we have different access points to more expansive work opportunities. So I want to say thank you to her and to everybody else who helped to make this happen. Stacy is actually a film and television actress. She's been active and served on local and national boards of SAG-AFTRA for the last two decades. I'm not aging her out. Serving on numerous committees. She chairs the National Low Budget Committee, co-chairs the National GAP, and chairs online privacy. She is passionate about contract and legislative solutions, fighting for us in Sacramento and Washington all the time. She's here to improve artists' lives and finances. She was recently on Be Positive, 
and can be seen, be seen on the upcoming show, Ms. Pat, and the Blumhouse film, The Manor on Amazon this fall. Stacy, I'm so happy that you're here. Thank you for being with us. And I'm gonna turn it over to you. Thank you so much, Gabrielle. And thank you for that lovely intro and your comments. I really appreciate that. Um, I'm gonna jump in because I bet people are watching and wanna have us get right to it. So I'm gonna do that. I would like to introduce two sag after staffers, Jessica Johnson, who is the Director of Entertainment Contracts in our Theatrical, TV, and New Media Department, and Lorna Badio, who's the Senior Manager of Entertainment Contracts in our Theatrical, TV, and New Media Department. Thank you both for joining us today. I work closely with them on the low budget contract, and I know that we are very lucky to have them on our staff, and we're very lucky to have them here today. So thank you. Jessica and Lorna are here to walk you through a presentation of our contracts before we jump into today's panel. So Jessica and Lorna, take it away. Thank you, Stacey. Thank you, everybody. Kamali, can you go ahead and put the slides up for us? Thank you. Before Jessica and I move forward, I want to say that everything that we go through on the slides is going to be available on sag -AFTRA's website, sagaftraorg forward slash micro. And if you click on the description box below, there's a link that'll take you directly to the site. Uh, next slide, please. So what is the micro bot? budget project agreement. We lovingly refer to this as micro. It is our newest low budget entertainment contract offered by SAG-AFTRA. We began the soft launch of the micro on December 1st of last year. And now we are so excited to give you the larger launch and a reintroduction and new introduction to some of you for the micro. Our members and staff designed this to make creating union content not intended for commercial distribution as easy as possible, while also continuing to protect our members, performers' interests in the event the project is the next big indie hit. Next slide, please. So what qualifies for the micro? The budget has to be $20,000 or less per picture or per episode. It's really important on the episode part, so you could theoretically have a nice series and it's 20,000 or less per episode, not for your entire series. It must be filmed entirely in the United States and that includes its territories like Puerto Rico, Guam, uh, US American Samoa. This is also a contract for dramatic and non-dramatic content. It's for live action entertainment. And what we mean by that is that it's not for animated projects. We have agreements that will cover animation. The producer cannot have received any compensation for the right to distribute or exhibit the project. An extra added bonus here, there is no runtime length. So you can produce a feature film for $20,000 or less. Next slide, please. So what does not qualify from the micro? And caveat exactly what President Cartera said, just because it doesn't qualify for the micro, it doesn't mean that we don't have an agreement that better fits your project. But what doesn't qualify for this specific agreement? If your project contains nudity or simulated sex, hazardous stunts, if it's animation, any audio only projects like audiobooks, podcasts, radio plays. The other content that's not covered under the micro is commercials or corporate education content, branded or influencer content, music videos, video games or any projects produced by AMPTP companies or who are term signatories. Um, so if any producer does misrepresent any qualifications or goes over that $20,000 budget threshold or obtains commercial distribution, SAG-AFTRA SAG does retain the right to reclassify to the appropriate agreement that we have here on deck in entertainment contracts and performers will also retain the right to pursue separate legal action. And I will kick it over to Jessica to uh, move us forward. Thanks, Lorna. So, you know, I'm sure a lot of you are very interested in learning more about the, the key terms of the micro agreement. Um, as President Carteris mentioned, the rates and terms of this agreement are negotiable between the producer and the performer. Um, this means that as a content creator, you can work with each of your individual performers to work out an arrangement that works best for both of you. Of course, sag after can't waive any laws um, or regulations, so you must continue to comply with any applicable you know, state, federal laws um, or you know, regulations in your area. Um, again, there's limited exhibition rights. The micro agreement is, is intended for projects that are only going to certain places. Um, it's not intended for big commercial release projects. We have other agreements that fit better for that. 
Um, but micro projects can go places like free to the consumer new media, also known as AVOD. Um, this can include social media platforms. Um, it can go to film festivals. Micro projects can be used for demo purposes to showcase your talent, maybe to attract investors for um, of ne your next bigger project. Um, they can be exhibited for Academy Award consideration. They can be shown on public access to television for one year, and they can be shown in the classroom. So micro is an option that is available to student filmmakers, uh, which we're very excited about as well. Next slide, please. I'm continuing on. The performer is only granting you as the content creator the right to use their name and likeness and performance in those limited markets. Um, the idea here is really that micro projects should only be going those places that I mentioned on the previous slide. Um, if you're looking to sell your project, you'd like to put it on an SVOD platform, um, or you know, you'd like to put it in uh, traditional movie theaters beyond film festivals. Again, we have other agreements that are a better fit for you in that case. But if you're just looking to go somewhere like AVOD, social media, film festivals, that sort of thing, this is a perfect fit. Um, this agreement prohibits digital avatars and digital scanning, including voice. Um, if you have further questions about that, we'd be more than happy to speak to you. Um, the producer, obviously, you know, in the times of COVID, uh, onset safety is very important. So the producer will be advised of the safe way forward, the return to work agreement and other safe set protocols. Um, as you may know, the, the union and member leaders have worked very hard to ensure that the industry standards are such that um, it's you know, going to work on set um, is as safe as it can be. So we, we continue that expectation in the micro budget world. Um, and additionally, the micro budget agreement has a one year term. Um, this doesn't mean that you're limited to exhibiting the project for one year. It just means you have one year in which to make the project. Um, if it's going to take you longer than a year to make the project, you should return to the union to discuss more. Next slide, please. Um, we know that a lot of you joining us here today wear multiple hats. So you may not only be a content creator, but you may also be a performer in a micro budget project. Um, so we wanted to remind you of some things that you should know as a performer working on the micro budget agreement, and also things that as a creator of a micro budget project, you should make sure that your performers know. Um, performers should always be informed that they're working under the micro budget agreement. Um, you should definitely express this to them as the producer. Um, but additionally, you will be required as the creator of a micro budget project to have your performer sign a performer acknowledgement form. Um, once you complete the process of signing your micro budget project up with SAG after, you will receive an email letting you know that you are ready to start. And that email will include the performer acknowledgement form. So you will receive that form to use. Um, you do have to have all of your per principal performers and background actors sign this acknowledgement form. Um, and you hang on to it. Keep good records as a producer of a micro. We'll let you know if we need you to send them in, um, but you don't necessarily have to send us all of your paperwork under this agreement. Again, terms including payment are fully negotiable and fringes, that's pension and health, um, are not due except as required by law. Next slide, please. Um, sag after is not verifying compliance with any laws um, in, in the micro case, but the producer, of course, still has to abide by the laws. You know, the union can't waive any laws like workers' compensation and minimum wage, um, but that is you know, between the producer and the governing body there. Uh, but performers you know, should, should be aware of these issues and check in on them as needed. Um, under this agreement, not only can the union bring claims for violation of the contract, but individual performers remain empowered um, to sue for breach of contract or any violation of any of their legal rights. Um, again, this isn't intended to be scary to producers. It's just to let content creators know um, that the micro budget is designed for certain parameters. Um, and if, you know, if, if you're not going to be able to work within those parameters, we do have another agreement that is right for you. Um, additionally, work under the micro budget agreement does not create eligibility to join the union. Um, it doesn't use the e-verify process. Um, this is something entirely different. I'm going to pause for a second as I think we are going to switch interpreters. Uh, next slide, please. So how do you sign up? The producer can apply by visiting sagaftra.org forward slash micro and completing the micro signatory application. The first step, it will bring you to a page that allows the producer to provide general contact information like your name, your email address, your phone number, and the name of your project. 
It'll bring you to complete a series of screening questions to determine if the project qualifies for the micro. Micro, And now you've seen some of the, the qualifications, what does and what doesn't qualify for the micro, but we want to help you a little bit more with the process. And so we're going to provide those screening questions for you. If the project does not qualify for the micro, the producer will producer will be redirected to the production center on our website for more information on what agreement fits is a better fit for your project. And you can always also call SAG after for assistance and we'll help guide you through the signatory process for the more appropriate agreement. Now, if your project does qualify, the producer will be able to move forward after the screening questions will be brought into the application itself and be able to complete that agreement. Next slide, please. Once the full application and agreement is submitted, the producer will receive an automated email approving the project to begin. This is a really exciting thing for us here. As staff, you don't have to wait around for a cleared email from us. Within about three minutes, you're gonna receive that email from us with instructions. Um, because the producer has submitted the agreement itself, the producer has represented and warranted those qualifications, so the application is automatically deemed clear once you're submitted. The email that you will receive from the union will include a copy of your specific micro budget project agreement, and it will also contain a PDF of that performer acknowledgement form. What I want to let you know is that when you visit the our website, um, for the micro budget, you'll be able to take a look at sample watermarked um, agreements and the acknowledgement form. So if you want to take a look at it after you've listened to this presentation today, you are free to take a look at those forms and preview it for yourself. Next slide, please. And I'll give it a, kick it over to Jessica. So as we mentioned, you know, there are some circumstances where the micro budget agreement isn't the right fit. Um, but we have plenty of other agreements, as uh, President Kateris mentioned, uh, we will have an agreement that works for you. Uh, we can go to the next slide, please. Uh, we've included some information about some of the agreements that are most commonly used when, uh, when micro isn't a good fit, including the short project agreement, the low budget new media agreement, and the ultra low budget project agreement. Uh, but as Lorna mentioned, there are other agreements that could apply. For example, if you have animation in your project, they have different separate animation agreements. Um, we know there's a lot of information here, so please don't hesitate to check out the production center on saggyafter.org for more information, or give us a call if you have any questions. Um, to run through some of the basics of the other agreements that might be available to you before we um, you know, get to the next part of this presentation, I'll tell you a little bit about the short project agreement. Um, the short project agreement is for projects budgeted at $50,000 or less. It's for non-episodic projects or singles, um, you know, shorts like the name suggests. Uh, it has a 40 minute runtime limitation. Rates are negotiable. Um, nudity and simulated sex is permitted, but of course you have to follow all of the uh, protocols around filming nudity and simulated sex scenes, including having a nudity writer in advance. Uh, stunts are permitted, but you have to have a stunt coordinator. The stunt coordinator is there for safety um, and is paid full scale rates. There's not a reduced rate for the stunt coordinator. Short projects should be intended for initial release on AVOD or free to the consumer new media, film festivals for demo purposes for Academy Award consideration and public access television for one year. Different from the micro budget agreement, however, is that short projects are able to go to other exhibition markets. It just may trigger deferred payments, um, if any, and also potentially residuals. The coverage under the short project agreement is all principal performers and the first 10 background actors per day when you're working in a background zone. And the short project agreement does provide a path to membership via our employment verification process. Not the traditional Taft-Hartley process that you might have heard of, but it is an alternate route to join the union if you're ready to do so. Um, another agreement that's commonly used when micro isn't, a, isn't the right fit is the low budget new media agreement. Um, this is available to episodic content budgeted at $50,000 per episode or less. There aren't any runtime uh, limitations and rates are deferrable. Just like with the short project agreement, nudity and simulated sex, um, as well as stunts are permitted with proper protocols and procedures surrounding them. Projects under the low budget new media agreement should be intended for initial release on a new media platform. Um, depending on the type of platform that is, whether it's a subscription platform or a free platform, uh, payments may be triggered by that release. And again, 
you know, like the short project agreement, it's possible that projects signed to the low budget new media agreement could have further distribution beyond new media markets, um, but that could trigger additional payments or residuals. Again, just like SPA, the low budget new media agreement covers all principal performers and 10 background actors per day when you're working in background zones. And again, it has an employment verification process that allows for individuals who are not yet members of the union to join SAG-AFTRA based on their work on the low budget new media agreement if they're ready to do so. And finally, we have the ultra low budget project agreement. Um, this is for projects budgeted at $300,000 or less. Again, this is for non-episodic content. It's for a single picture, um, but there isn't a runtime limitation. So it could certainly be a feature length project. Rates are set at 20% of scale. Uh, that means currently the data player rate is $206, but you should expect to see the rate increase every July 1st, along with our basic agreement rates. Again, nudity and simulated sex, as well as stunts, are permitted with the proper protocols and procedures under this agreement. Uh, the initial release is similar to the short project agreement, free new media, film festivals, demo purposes, Academy Award consideration. But again, it's, it's understood and expected that an ultra low budget project uh, may have other exhibition beyond those initial markets, which would trigger residuals um, or potentially additional payments. Um, coverage under the ultra low budget project agreement is all professional principal performers. Um, and there is an employment verification path under this agreement as well. Uh, it's a little different than SPA and New Media, but if you have questions about it, please feel free to reach out and we'll be happy to help. Um, again, I know it's a lot of information, so please feel free to check out the website for more or let us know if you have questions. Uh, next slide, please. This is just a reminder, if we haven't said it before, we'll say it again. You know, there's lots of information available at sagafter.org slash production center. Um, additionally, this is where you would find the signatory application if you wanted to get started on a short project, low budget new media project, and or ultra low budget project. And that is it for the presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much to that, Jessica and Lorna for that uh, very informative presentation. And I just wanna now introduce our fabulous panel. Uh, I'll start with Evan Bass. He's an actor, writer, producer whose production company, Electric Bass Entertainment, has produced projects from sketches, web series, TV pilots, and feature films. Evan volunteers in numerous committees, SAG-AFTRA's National Low Budget Committee, National and New York Local Next Gen Performers, and he is on the New York Local Board. He is focused on helping the union make the produce, producing process as simple and positive an experience as possible. His production website has a page specifically for uh, assisting producers. His award-winning short film, How You Are To Me, focusing on dementia and caregiving, is currently being broadly released. His recent performances can be seen on Law & Order SVU, Season 6 Power on Stars, and The Loudest Voice on Showtime. Welcome, Evan. Thank you. Andrea Lyman is a singer, actor, producer, working in film, stage, voiceover, and print. She and her film team have created several films over the years that can be seen in various film festivals. Her award-winning film, The Donor, was last seen in the Pan-African Film Festival in Cannes. Andrea produces her one-woman musical show, Broadway Lady, which tours uh, Hawaii, New York City, Massachusetts, and Europe. She can be seen in various national commercials, films, TV shows, and web series. Welcome, Andrea. Troy Osborne Pryor is a producer, host, and actor. His collaborations have led to award-winning projects and content on ABC, Warner Brothers, True TV, and many others. Troy is an advocate for connecting undiscovered and diverse talent to mainstream content and media platforms through his production network, Creative Cipher. Troy was the youngest person ever to be on the SAG-AFTRA Chicago's local board, and he served as a mentor for President Barack Obama's White House project, A Call to Arts with SAG-AFTRA. Noteworthy mentions include Chicago Scholars 35 Under 35, Black Enterprise TCX Fellow, and AD Color Nominated Innovator of the Year. Welcome, Troy. So as we begin our discussion, I'd like to kick off with your roles as content creators, and then we can pivot back to your experience and perspective as performers. So let's dive right in. So for those of you that have applied uh, for micro already, I'd like to know how was the application process and how did you find the timeframe? Uh, I'll start with you, Andrea. 
Okay. Um, actually, it was it was pretty easy. Now they've like made it incredibly easy. You just um, fill out the paperwork, and then um, you have to remember that the thing you get back that that you fill out for the have each actor fill out. You just hang on to that. You don't have to send it anywhere. You hang on to it. Then you're just ready to go. So I've done it with other people, and I've done my own projects. It's been like me split. Fantastic, uh, Evan. Same question. Yeah. Uh, I agree. I did a, a sketch recently and uh, tested out the process and it was, as, as sort of Andrea said, super easy, went on. Um, I think it'll be faster the next time because I actually read everything, which takes a second, but you know, maybe 10 minutes to make sure you read everything and fill it out. And then, uh, yeah, the automatic email was a, a lovely surprise since I'm used to waiting for sort of the approval. Um, so it was nice to get that. And um, given that the performer agreements are in PDF form, it's easy to pull onto uh, an, a, a tablet or a smartphone and then just use uh, an app to fill it in. So you have it saved digitally. So it's, yeah, super simple and love the fact that uh, you just register and then can go. Fantastic. Um, to Jessica and Lorna on that same subject, how late is too late to submit? And what if a member's trying to turn a non-union project union and use micro and has very little time. All right, thanks for that, Stacey. Um, I think as, you know, as, as the others mentioned, um, Andrea and Evan, you know, it is, it, it's a very quick process to use the micro agreement. So if you want to sign a micro project, you know, you could do it minutes before, you know, before you're going to actually start recording your pro pro project. So that's very exciting. Um, one, you know, kind of caveat I'll put out there is if there's any chance that your project doesn't qualify for micro, uh, you know, if you aren't quite sure, um, you know, if you think you might, might want to do a little bit more than what the micro agreement allows for, you will have to go through a more traditional process. So you should give yourself some more lead time there. Uh, you know, ideally, we'd like to see kind of three to four weeks um, in advance of when you intend to begin shooting, if you might have to go through that full process. Uh, you know, if you don't have that kind of time, let us know. We will do our very best to help you. We just can't make any guarantees if we don't have, you know, the, the full time period. So that's, that's just the warning that I put there. If you're not sure if micro is going to work, sooner is better. Um, but, you know, as, as everyone mentioned, you know, the micro agreement is uh, able to be done. Uh, I think lickety split that was the phrase that was used. So you can you can do it lickety split. Great. And then. I would like to ask for one of you to explain um, how you can use union and non-union mixed in this contract. Yes, so the micro budget agreement allows you to use both union and non-union performers without penalty. Uh, you know, we think that's really great uh, because it enables you, you know, as a content creator to, you know, possibly uh, bring in, you know, new performers that haven't had the chance to, uh, you know, have union opportunities yet and bring them into the fold. Um, but also, you know, have some experienced actors, uh, you know, on your set um, and working with those new people, you know, we think it uh, expands your horizons in producing at this budget level. Uh, the short project agreement, ultra low budget project agreement and new media agreement have similar provisions that do allow you to mix union and non-union without penalty. Um, and of course, even as you progress into the higher budgeted agreements, there's still an opportunity to include non-union performers, there just could be a penalty associated with that. Thank you. Um, Evan, can you share how some projects could come together in ways viewers may not think about or ways that um, might be, you know, interesting ways to use this contract? Yeah, I mean, uh, so this this uh, micro budget agreement sort of came out of uh, something from even the, the 2017 uh, sag after convention and then again, the 2019. Uh, and the big push was, you know, if you're a comedian and you do political sketches, you don't necessarily have the time to register a project and wait three weeks. You gotta, you know, turn it out quickly because you want to seize on, you know, what's happening in the zeitgeist. So doing sketches like that, you know, you know, you can qualify for a micro budget. You're putting it on YouTube. You want to film it tomorrow. You know, you go in, you do the registra registration process. Boom, you know, it's right there for comedians who, you know, want to collaborate, but they, it's again. It's sort of a quick idea that you want to turn over quickly. You know, you're filming on your iPhone, you're filming on whatever, um, but you can do a fast turnover. This allows you to sort of jump into that um, sketch groups. I know I'm uh, in the improv, you know, scene, you come up with an idea, oh, you want to film it. Um, you know, you have momentum. Uh, it allows you to do that. Also, I think, you know, a lot of times when you're a union member, uh, when it's really low budget, normally in the past, 
projects haven't been able to really qualify and or producers are worried that it's like too much work. Like, oh, I don't want to deal with doing this. And then I got to wait and then I got to qualify for this. And then what kind of contract do I have to do? And what do I, I mean, which actually with the new media and spa is not hard, but this is even easier. So it's a way to say, hey, we can do that project. Just do this registration thing and we can do it, which is a really nice way to turn a lot of projects that would normally go non-union to union, um, which is nice. Uh, I, I mentioned though, uh, previously in the presentation, like podcasts are still under the new media contract um, and animation and start non live action. That's right. It's not for music videos, podcast, animation, et cetera. Um, Troy, can you talk about ways that you might want to use it even in some non-scripted aspects or anything you'd like to add here? Absolutely. So echoing this idea of uh, this contract being excellent for timely work is paramount, uh, especially with so much going on in the world today. This contract provides a creator the platform and the voice uh, to speak to things that they may not have uh, had the opportunity to speak to. And there are a couple of perspectives to look at this. Uh, this idea of create, don't wait, uh, being able to move forward uh, right with your ideas, but also looking at it from the perspective of of how you can use this or how diverse creators who may have not had access to resources for some time can now use this in their larger purpose behind mm -hmm. leveraging their platform uh, to create certain, uh, certain content, uh, to speak to certain things. So there are different perspectives you can have on the, the value that this project, uh, that this content uh, contract brings to the table, not only supporting the artistry of the creators, but also providing a platform or access to uh, a more streamlined resource uh, to diverse creators. And even when we think about it being a, a, some of these con content projects being under a lower budget, we also want to make sure these we have a perspective that these are not throwaway projects. They don't have to be throwaway projects. You can have a larger purpose to your goal, as mentioned earlier, where this project can be the stepping stone to something larger, which I've done twice at this point, and both in the unscripted and in the scripted space, taking a project that had a, a smaller budget prior to this contract coming out. I wish this was out before because it's so <laughs> great, but then being able to take that project and then using that to get a major network to now option and then buy the buy the rights to a concept that has now been optioned for a major streaming platform. So we're going to max that out. But, you know, these are great opportunities for emerging creators, mid-level creators uh, to use this uh, resource, but also from the perspective of our staff, if we think about uh, having individuals in those positions use their time to make on, on a higher level uh, decisions. Uh, so now it it takes away some of the convolutedness sometimes. If, you're, if you got piles of contracts stacked up, this provides them the opportunity to free up some space to focus on higher level decisions that need to be made, which ultimately serve us all. Thank you. Can I, can I actually add something to what Troy said, which I think is sure. brilliant, is the idea that you can use the micro budget agreement as that stepping stone. And for the performer, this allows you to be in from the ground up. So when that derivative work gets sold, you're already part of that project and then can be possibly attached or you have a leg up when that project makes it big. And so it gives you opportunity to be in on all of those projects on the ground level, which I think helps uh, our members a lot. Absolutely. Um, um, just, do you mind if I just say something? Because it's sort of sure. on the other side of, of that, which is um, it's, it's happening with a lot of our members, is you don't have a big budget, but you have great ideas and you have the equipment and you're able to film stuff. You get to a chance to use your creativity to, to act, which is what we want to be doing. And you get to, to produce them because before it was like anything recorded needs to have a contract and the other contracts were too complicated. So you can do this thing on, on the fly that, that fits the micro budget and you can film it and you are working, working, working all the time, which is what people want. This is the time you can, you can do your, your performance that maybe is for your family or is maybe for your friends or maybe just a small social media, but you get to be acting all the time. So and that's something that helps. Absolutely. And under a union contract. Um, I would like to ask uh, Jessica and Lorna if, 
If, um, can you talk a little bit about uh, just for budget level, because spa is under 50,000 and micro is under 20. So let's say you have 15 and you're not sure, do I want to use micro or do I want to use spa? Or you're, you could make a student film if you're a student, uh, but you could also maybe use micro. Can you talk a little bit about how to help guide where they would want to go, um, especially like a student who's unsure, because they could really make spa, micro or a student film? Thanks. Or yeah, um, and that's a great question. And, and what I want to emphasize with that is that unlike the short project agreement, the micro did not retire any other agreement, right? So we have the short project agreement and that retired its predecessor, the short film agreement, but the micro didn't do that, which means you can qualify for a student film agreement of which we have many student content um, makers and they say, well, wait a minute, I, I need to film this this weekend. It is under $20,000. I don't have stunts and there's no sex, no simulated, no simulated sex, no nudity. I, I think I can do this. I, there's no runtime length, which is a great thing for a lot of our student filmmakers um, that want to employ and engage union talent. And they call us, you can call a union. We'll, we're gonna have that chart that Jessica had walked through um, earlier and we'll have that on the website and we're gonna add that student film column as well for, for everybody. But that timeliness, that efficiency, that student filmmaker will have the opportunity to say, oh my gosh, I do have another opportunity to still make this a union project, but not do the two to four weeks signatory process for the student film agreement. And I can still do the micro just like that. Um, because guess what, even though the staff may not be here on the weekend, you can still access the agreement throughout the weekend. So that's really helpful. The micro budget also has the, op the opportunity not only to do feature films, 20,000 and below, but you can do your episodic work. That is a huge thing for, for our content creators. And again, if, if you get those qualifications, and I wanna say, you can actually go to our website. And if you wanna even go through the screening questions alone to even pre-vet, so don't, don't finish the agreement, but you can go through those screening questions if you think you may or may not qualify, take a look at it and it will give you a good sense of, should I go micro? Right. Or should I go ahead and go through the student or the spa? And I will say we've had a lot of professors in the college space and the university space who say, you know what, I think even though my students will qualify to use a micro, I want them to maybe go through the process of a, a full signatory process so they learn how to use exhibit G's, performer mm -hmm. contracts, and final cast list. So it really is, it can be an educational use of how you do it, or really it's an efficiency thing. Thank you. I know we have different uh, film schools and universities. We have different student film agreements with, but if you're at a university where we don't have a specific agreement, this might be the perfect thing for you. And especially if you have a fast turnaround. And as I always say to everyone, keep everything as a performer. If you're an actor on any of these projects, hang on to your call sheets, hang on to your contracts. Even years from now, you might need to reach someone and say, hey, I never got that copy. I want this, especially student films are supposed to give you a copy. So, um, you know, hang on to everything uh, so that you can reach back out to people. Um, this question, uh, I'll start with Evan. Do you want to talk anything about from the content creator point of view? We'll pivot back to the actor point of view in terms of making micro. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, sort of just echoing what has been said by everybody, it, it gives a route to make your content both quickly and very easily uh, without a hassle. I think, you know, even though uh, for those of us on the panel who have done new media contracts or spa agreements, we know that's not a big hurdle. And this, you know, the schedule G's and the timesheets and uh, performer contracts aren't that difficult to do, but sometimes it can be intimidating. Uh, this is not intimidating. This is, you know, uh, title registration. You put it in, you go, you get your your um, performers to, you know, read and agree. Um, but also, uh, it allows you to have a lot more flexibility. I think, uh, you, you know, you want to shoot a, a sketch. Normally, you have to, you know, plan uh, extensive uh, time ahead of time for uh, going through the um, the, you know, the signatory the agreement process, this allows you to say like, hey, I, I got a group of friends together, let's do this. And it allows members to join together and say, okay, let's let's make this project together without worrying about breaking global rule one or, or things like that. Right. Um, and so as like a multi-hyphenate, it's great 
to be able to just jump in. And um, it's great because if you're worried about like where something falls, you can just look at, you know, the list of things that's allowed and go like, okay, I can do this and not, uh, I need to have this much budget or like, okay, I have to have, you know, money for this and money for this and money for this. Um, that said, I still will throw the caveat, uh, just because you can make something doesn't mean you shouldn't produce it well. Uh, you always got to, you always want to plan. You always want to do a breakdown. You, you don't want to, you know, as a multi-hyphenate, you know the performer side and you don't want to insult any performers by not doing a top-notch job. So, you know, learn from these, but also it allows potentially pairing up with a more seasoned producer and learning from them. Um, yeah, but I'm sure everybody else in the panel has, has additional things. Um, Andrea, would you like to talk about, I don't know if you encountered, you know, if you made yours during COVID and safety issues yes. or pay issues, yes. go ahead. Yes, um, and, and it was so fast. Well, actually one, project I was involved in was a, a web series and season one was before the micro and it was very complicated and the producer was frustrated. Season two, um, which we got, um, that was with the micro and she was, she's an actor, performer, producer, director, writer, everything. And she, she just said how much easier it was. And we've, you know, already completed season two and it's winning awards and things like that. And yeah. another thing I did was a student film under the micro. Once again, it went very easily for them and they were able to just do the whole thing. And I see other performers in my region that are just making, I guess you'd call it COVID films, you know, they're, they're uh, quarantined together because a husband and wife or, or whatever they are. And they're making these films under this budget and they're able to put it right out and, it's, and get it done easily. I have another person in our area that is forever doing things that are politically um, savvy and it's right on point. So he needs to do these things right away. Like something happens in the news, he puts it out right away. And now with this one, he can do that. It used to be so complicated. Wonderful. And Troy, do, do you have thoughts on like deferred pay versus pay? Or I don't know if you wanna add anything here. Well, ultimately, it, it's all about providing value because it still is the business of show. And so as echoing what Evan said, uh, we want to take care of one another. This is a community performer, uh, creator, performer, producer, multi-hyphenate. Uh, we want to make sure that just because we have this flexibility in this new contract that we are caring for our fellow uh, performers in the projects. Therefore, if something is deferred or not, it's all about communicating and making sure that we're providing value to one another. If in fact that performer decides to defer or you wanna negotiate something, you just wanna make sure we take care of one another. Uh, as was said several times, if you look at this in the macro sense, it can be a stepping stone, you can build, you never know where relationships uh, you can cultivate and build into something else, but ultimately, uh, looking at this as a resource, as a part of a bigger narrative is mm -hmm. the way to go. And we definitely, and this is a sort of a call to action to those uh, producer creators is you, this is not a contract to then abuse because you have uh, some flexibility. And we wanna make sure that uh, we are emphasizing that, especially as those that are multi-hyphenates, uh, let's make sure that we add value to one another's careers. I appreciate that. Yes, I, I think that's beautifully said. Um, Evan, did you want to circle back? I'm going to go on to my next question. Otherwise, did, did you have anything you want to add? Uh, really from the, the content creator perspective? Yeah, or the performer perspective. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, I, I yeah, I think uh, what Andrew and Troy said, I mean, just completely agree. And I think, you know, uh, I always advocate from like the deferred pay or not is like, if you're paying your crew, then you should also have your budget to pay your actors because you know we're all equal at least on 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 that level and that you know you can't get a sound person to to work for you for free they're coming with their kit i mean actors the performers put in their work you know they're preparing their songs their 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 choreography their you know um uh the text like that's work so so sort of balancing it and i think from the um performer perspective I think uh, the two things I just wanted to touch on were one, this is the moment, at least for me, there was a lot of projects in the past where I had a lot of like non-union friends and they're doing something. And I'm like, oh, I'd love to do that. Can we do a project? And they'll be like, oh, the paperwork and like, Ugh. and now is, is the time I can be like, we'll just use the micro budget agreement, like super easy. Yeah. Let's do this. And now we can film this together. 
Um, yeah. That all said, uh, that you know, there's as as Troy said, there's a two way streak, and I think as a performer, because rates negotiable, because uh, it's a lot more hands off from the union. As a performer, you need to uh, know and and have the strength to um, advocate for yourself, right? I mean, this yeah, I filmed a sketch of the, you know, we both were in masks the whole time. The cinematographer was in, or I, I was in it. So I took it off just for filming. We had air purifier on when we weren't filming. Cinematographer had a mask on the whole time. He was tested, you know, a couple of days before. Like you have to advocate for your rights because I know on, on other projects, not even micro budget agreement, performers have, have arrived and they're not following any safety protocols and they don't feel safe, that part of that, you know, supporting each other is keeping each other safe too. And so knowing that you can advocate for yourself is, is just important to remember as well. That's right. And, uh, you know, our, our vaccines and uh, COVID numbers up and down are, are completely different per state and in different cities to really be aware that um, you still have to be very careful of safety projects. And I, I had a friend that was one of, I think, the one of the very first people to use this and was chomping at the bit and waiting and waiting, and waiting for us to have it. And, um, you know, she was telling a very personal story and scraping together every single dime to make her directorial debut as a performer. And it, it kind of hit her like, wait, I am paying all my crew. I want my actors to come and give their all in this deeply personal story. And she found a way to pay them. So it, it, it just ups their engagement and it ups their professionalism and it makes sure they're there for them, the creator, the director. So um, I, I very much advocate paying your performers if you can. Um, I'd like to uh, ask Jessica and Lorna, if you make a micro project and um, it sells somewhere that you didn't expect that are not within the confines of this project, uh, what do you suggest those content creators do? Thanks, Stacey. That's a great question. You know, as we've mentioned, the micro budget agreement really isn't intended for projects that are going to sell somewhere. You know, if you are interested in possibly selling somewhere, you're, you're better served starting off the right agreement that's a better fit for you. The terms are going to make more sense for what you're doing. But like you mentioned, you know, sometimes things happen and, you know, it's, it's not a bad thing if, you know, unexpectedly, you know, your project that you only intended to put on YouTube, you know, ends up getting picked up somewhere. Um, if something like that is happening with your micro project, please come talk to the union right away. Um, you know, we can we can work with you. We can you know set your expectations for what might happen and figure out the best way to do it together. So don't be afraid to come talk to us. Uh, we're we're really pleasant, see. Um, but you know, uh, come talk to us, and and we will figure it out with you. Um, but just really want to emphasize that you know, if you think you want to sell your project, we do have a different agreement that's going to make a, a lot more sense for your project. But you know, if, if things happen and things change, uh, we, we understand that's the nature of this business and we can pivot with you. That's right. And I know in SPA, we made it platform agnostic because we heard from so many people that you make a project and maybe two years later, you sell it where you didn't expect to. And, and maybe it's new media or film. So we've, we've, we've tried to, uh, you know, change our contracts to reflect that creators don't always know where things are going to land and you can't predict that. And, and we need to be flexible in that. But in this particular, there's reasons it's so quick, so fast, but um, there, there's limitations. So definitely call the union if you find yourself outside the limitations of this contract. And then I wanna ask again, if you're a performer and let's say uh, you're doing a web series or you do a little short and you signed it and perhaps your pay was deferred um, and then you see it uh, somewhere that maybe isn't within the parameters of what you signed on to, uh, what should that performer do? Definitely give us a call um, and you know let us take a look at it with you and figure out the, the best path forward. Um, you know, micro is, is somewhat unique um, in that not only is there rights for the union um, to pursue a claim if something has you know not gone the way it should, uh, but also the individual performer retains a lot of rights um, and even the uh, the ability to sue under this contract, which of course you know we hope that never happens, um, right. and that isn't the intention of the agreement. But you know, should should a should a micro project end up where it shouldn't be? Um, there are a number of different paths to resolution there, but definitely as a performer, you know, give us a call and we will you know, help you brainstorm the, the best resolution for your particular circumstances. 
Great. And I will say, it, you know, have a little bit of patience. We, we are to reduce staff uh, due to COVID. So um, they're working as hard as they can. We have an amazing contract staff, but we have a lot of contracts and a lot of people. And so just be slightly patient. Um, but yes, if you see that somewhere, call the union. Um, now that we know a little bit more about micro projects, where do you suggest our members begin? Jessica or Lorna? Sure. I as we've been mentioning, I've, hopefully we've hammered it home and you all memorize this um, right now, but sagaftra.org forward slash micro. It's in the description box below if you're watching on YouTube right now. It is so easy, so simple. We have the watermark samples for you to even just read through the agreement before you want to maybe go through the application itself. So we have the, we even have a one sheeter on the website as well, or also known lovingly as a cheat sheet. So everything that we've gone through on the slides, you can take that PDF, download it for yourself. You can even email it to your fellow content creators. And the link is right on the website as well. I'll give you a little hint, a little hot tip. If you go to sagaftra.org forward slash micro form, it drops you right into the application itself. So if you are Com totally convinced that this is actually what fits for your project, go directly to the application, just add form to that end. Wonderful. Um, well, I uh, want to allow for member questions that they've been sending in and maybe sending in live. And I would like to thank our panelists again, Evan, Troy, Andrea, and hand the mic over back to President Carteris. And thank you, Lorna and Jessica for um, getting us up to speed a little bit and we're going to continue to answer member questions. So thank you guys. And back to you, Gabrielle. Thank you. That was great, Stacey. I, I taking notes. First of all, I want to say not only is the information great, but you guys as panelists, the way I just wrote uh, Troy saying, create, don't wait, take care of everybody. I mean, create, don't wait should be our, the brand. I mean, it, that's so great. And Evan, it's true not to intimidate and to, you know, I, I just, I think it was wonderful. The messages that you guys were giving out was really, it was so special. We do have a lot of questions that are coming in. And so I'll try to do a couple of what we have here with Rebecca. And then, um, you know, again, don't forget you guys can go to the site to go and get that contract to be able to work it immediately. Cause that's nimble, nimble, nimble. The first question I have here um, is for micro. Do I have to submit any post-production paperwork like exhibit G's, contracts, final cast list, like I do on the other agreements? You don't have to. Yay. Uh, you, <laughs> yay. No post-production paperwork that you have to submit. Um, Andrea actually was one of our first content creators, member producers that use the micro during its soft launch. And she actually gave us really helpful feedback, which we added into that automated email, which says you do not have to submit any additional paperwork to the union. So, you know, hang on to copies of those performer acknowledgement forms. If the union does request those forms of you, then we will request it and then you can go ahead and submit it, but hang on to paperwork. We don't need anything from you as soon as you're cleared. I think, I think it is important to remember. That, I'm sorry, Gabby. No, go on, Jessica. I was going to say a point that you know I think that um, you know the, the panelists made too is do keep in mind that even though this is for lower budgeted projects, you know they aren't throwaway projects. They are still you know professional performers that you're hiring on your projects. So just because you don't have to submit those documents to the union, you know doesn't mean that you still shouldn't keep good records as a, as a producer. You know you are still producing professional content, so you should still keep track of you know what times people are working and you possibly have more documents like that. You just don't have to send them in right away. Great, thank you for that. And I, thank you. Uh, Rebecca. Yeah, uh, we got a lot of good commentary coming from folks uh, in and around this just being a great way to onboard people into starting to do SAG after work, which I love and have been so uh, excited that the committee did this work uh, to bring it forward. I think it's just so critical. Um, uh, the question that I, of this sort of this group that struck me really interesting was, you know, uh, it, it goes a long way to doing that. And now people will learn the signatory process, all these different things uh, and just an education, but people have curiosity about music videos. So where do music videos fit into this? 
Thank you. Thanks, Rebecca. So music videos do not qualify for the micro budget agreement. Um, you know, we do have an entire team in the SAG after music department, though, that would be more than happy to work with any music video producer. Um, you know, it, it's a different contract, so it just works a little differently. Um, but I definitely encourage anybody that wants to make a music video to get in touch with the music department. Uh, they would be happy to figure out a way to, to make that a union project as well. Great. I, I, I would urge that. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, okay. No, I would just urge everybody when you're hearing this, because it's coming in different, uh, you know, hearing it different ways, anything that you want to be able to work on in order to make sure that we can go and cover it, because there's a way to do that. Always, if you don't see it online, don't be afraid to call, right? Don't be afraid to call, because we want to make sure, just as Stacy said earlier, let's keep it all union and uh, moving forward. So thank you for that. Um, I have a question that came in. It says, how about micro budget branded content online only under 20,000 K creative content distributed independently with the partnership of a featured brand, which contract contract would that fit in? Yes. Yeah, so, so just like music videos, branded content, it doesn't fit under micro budget contract either. Um, but I'm sure you've heard that we do have a new influencer contact uh, contract administered by uh, our colleagues in the commercials department. Um, so I, you know, I wouldn't want to, uh, to go too far into that because they are really the experts on that. But if you want to make branded content, I would definitely uh, get in touch with the, with the commercial department. Uh, there's a lot of you know, exciting uh, changes in that world too with, with the new agreement. Yes, the influencer agreement is exciting. That is for another day, but thank you for that. Rebecca? Yeah, we have a question about someone who is uh, uh, developing a project for an internet they're writing, they're going to direct, which is, you know, the way of the future. Everybody's doing everything. The two lead actors are sag after eligible already. And in order for it to be a sag after signatory, will they need to join? Is there any minimum number of sag after actors needed in the project to become a sag after a signatory? Sure, I can take that. You need at least one sag after a member in good standing to use any of our um, low budget agreements. So, you know, whether or not they become a SAG after a member um, right before the micro, that's great. Um, and what was the second part of the question, Rebecca? If you don't mind repeating. Uh, no problem. Let me pull it right back up. I was already on to the next question. Oh, the second part had to do, uh, uh, is there a minimum number? You answered it. You, you okay, covered cool. it. Yeah, just at least one. Yeah, great. Gabrielle? Um, this just came in. Will SAG Indie be able to help educate filmmakers and content creators in this agreement like they do with other low budget contracts? And can the panel of content creators and staff discuss the best ways for members to advocate for themselves when negotiating pay for these contracts or not accepting deferred pay? I'll take the first part of the question about working with SAG Indy. We hope so. We work in partnership with SAG Indy um, pre-COVID on a monthly basis with workshops. So we hope to continue that partnership moving forward. Yes, and we will for sure. So, and then the second one, this is from the panel uh, of content creators and staff. Please discuss best ways for members to advocate for themselves when negotiating pay for these contracts or not accepting deferred pay. I'll, I'll probably let maybe Evan take that. I, I think that can be awkward if it's a close friend asking you to do something. It's probably going to depend on the role, if you really want to do it, if you have time, if it's not pulling you from potential higher paying work. It, it's probably going to depend where you are in your career and even in that particular week, moment, day. But uh, Evan, do you have some suggestions on how to broach that? Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's sort of something that sort of Troy touched upon as well. It's, it's the respect thing. You know, you always want to respect on set. Um, I've I've come in as a you know producer and helped uh, other low budget projects, and they very you know usually are going deferred pay, and and I just use that same sort of discussion like okay, so is the sound you know mixer getting paid? Okay, is the cinematographer getting paid? All right, is the you know G and E getting paid? Okay, so they're getting paid and you respect the actors, the performers, as much as you do the crew, okay, so therefore, you know, let them come to the conclusion um, and, and, and say, you know, uh, when you're advocating for yourself uh, in, you know, with the caveat that if everybody, you know, if it's your friend is filming on their smartphone and nobody's getting paid, uh, it is hard to advocate that you should get paid because then again, respect for everybody else, 
there's sort of a balance, but if, but if others are getting paid sort of saying, you know, I'm putting in the work, like, you know, I, I, I show up, I do the work, but there's a lot of work that happens ahead of time. Just like, you know, pre-production happens for producers, you know, analyzing of the script happens for actors. They're, you know, they're on set, they're performing, singers have to, you know, prepare, they have their, you know, their lessons, dancers have to, you know, learn the choreography. There's a lot that goes into it ahead of time and just sort of reminding them of that um, can be helpful. Uh, a lot of times, if it is a multi-hyphenate and crew is being paid, they're already thinking about paying the the um, the performers. You know, it, again, it's negotiable and you can say, this is the rate that I would like, and it might not be the one that you can get, but at least that's a starting point. Great. Thank you, Evan. Um, I'll kick it back to you, Gabrielle. Thank you so much, Stacey. I wanna actually, cause we're coming up to time. I think Rebecca has another uh, question. Then. Yeah, this is a great one. I, I love it because it talks about, and I just having heard the conversations that you guys, so many of you had as a committee uh, and leaders, I love this. People always talk about innovating. This gives me a chance to innovate. Are there any good resources as a low budget filmmaker where I can uh, highlight my work and stuff like that? Are there good film festivals for these things? That's That was the, the gist of the question for any of y'all to answer. Andrew. Can I answer that one? Mm -hmm. um, just because um, when you're looking for film festivals, think about where your film fits because there's so many film festivals out there. You might have something that fits into a certain niche. I mean, I know um, I on the board of Roxbury International Film Festival, Rox Films, and so they're looking for films with uh, black and African-American, um, or you don't have to be African-American, black actually, um, content, actors, producers, whatever. So if yours has none of that, then maybe that's not where you wanna submit your film. But there there might be some other area, and, and that's the thing, like a lot of times you don't know, you're trying to get into a big film festival where there's all these film festivals that fit exactly what you're doing. Like you're doing something on, I don't know, um, people with with uh, some certain disability and there's a film festival for that. So first look for the niche ones that fit what you're doing and then go broader and broader. Cause once you've been in one film festival then you can get into more and more and more. And that's just my suggestion. I had one point just to add to that. And then looking at it as a, from a business perspective, you know, you have this idea of creating for market. So knowing your audience as a speaker, you have to know your audience, whatever this political, you know, whatever the, the case may be. But uh, one way to go about doing it, uh, opposed to creating a project and then wondering where it goes, is to already have those conversations going on prior to creating your IP to begin with. So if you already know what the destination is, whether it's just uh, inevitably a streaming platform, whether it's a derivative of what you created or a festival, but you know where you want it to live, you can build that into your game plan from the get-go. So you're not um, at, you don't hit a wall once you're done with production. That's just another perspective to have on that. And I, this is for another discussion, but um, I'm a big fan of pitch decks for that exact reason that Andrea and Troy have been saying that like it, you, you do it before the project and you decide what that niche is. You, you, figure it out because everyone has it. And these days, you know, with the Netflix and the streaming, it's all about the niche, you know, uh, items and complete, yeah, I'm gonna be quiet now because they said it all. No, that's actually good. That could be another also thing that we do, but I, I'm gonna go, I just, I, I think this is so rich and you guys are so wonderful. I'm just gonna do one last question and then we're gonna have to, of course, do this again. But um, the question that came in, uh, and it's on, I think, a lot of people's minds. If I've already started the process with another agreement, can I switch to micro? Just, right. Yeah, so if you've, already, if you've already started the process and you're still you know, going through the signatory process, maybe you just submitted an application, uh, just let your signatory rep know, and yes, we can get you switched over to micro. Uh, you know, if you've already completed the signatory process and started under another contract, you know, you, you've already accomplished that, so, so stick with that one. But yes, if you're still midway through the signatory process, just uh, reach out and we will we'll get you switched over. Perfect. Thank you so much, everybody. This has been an incredible discussion. I really appreciate um, 
each of our live stream events. I think they've been great. And that you are all able to be here and take time out of your schedules to be with us today, wherever you may be streaming in the world. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We didn't get to everyone's questions today, we tried. So if you are in need of further assistance or something comes up in your mind that you didn't ask, please email ENT contracts info, so entertainment abbreviated ENT contracts info at sagafter.org. That's ENT contracts info at sagafter.org. And if you want to uh, get more information on the micro agreement, please visit sagafter.org slash micro. If you'd like to get more information on the spa agreement, again, sagafter.org slash short project. On behalf of the team here at SAG After, we just want to say thank you for taking the time to be with us. It's a pleasure with all of you being here and sharing your knowledge and your uh, and the future of what everything's going to look like. This has been very, 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 very helpful. Special thanks to each of you who've been tuning in each week for our President's Task Force and Education Outreach and Engagement. If you haven't already, while you're here, please subscribe to SAG After YouTube channel get updates on the great content that we're posting and, uh, and have a beautiful day. Thank you so much for being with us. Take care.